So I've just finished making this. It is a new YouTube subscriber and total view counter. My starting point for making this sign was the YouTube logo. Now, thankfully, they provide this in a variety of formats. So I was able to find um, kind of an illustrator version of this file, kind of a vector graphic and pull out the, the core bit. I removed the little kind of drop shadow they have along here. And so I ended up with this kind of really simple two piece logo. And I've then cut this out of white and red acrylic. It took me a couple of goes to find the right red. I ended up with a much darker one to begin with, but I think this matches the YouTube logo pretty well as a starting color. And so then I've got uh, that as the front. And then what I'm gonna do is attach a backing piece to this. In order to mount the Raspberry Pi, I need some way of kind of securing and holding everything in place. And so that's where this support structure comes from. So I've modeled this up in CAD first. So I tried a new approach for me. For, normally this is kind of, it's 3D, but it's also 2D, being kind of flat pieces, kind of cut on a laser cutter. So I'd normally kind of use a, just Illustrator or an SVG program just to kind of craft this, but I've used it um, Fusion 360 to make this as a model and then taken uh, projections of each of the sides. And that's allowed me to really see what it looked like before I started cutting. And so the backing piece is this white section here. It's made from four different pieces. I've got two stands and two layers of acrylic. And these are all held together using the kind of locking pins of the uh, stand legs themselves. And they form quite a tight fit. Let me pull this out. So the stands uh, like this either side and you've got these six millimeter protrusions and these pass through two layers of acrylic and this locks this whole section in place. I previously had a, um, a counter, YouTube counter, which counted the subscriptions and the total views and that was um, that we're using a little kind of LED matrix display um, which is really cool but it didn't provide much in the way of resolution so what I ended up doing, I, I could display three digits. And so I, through a lot of playing around, I was able to round down those two numbers into something that I could understand from just seeing three digits. And um, in both a good and a bad way, when my view count, total view count rolled over a million views recently, that kind of broke entirely, which is kind of what spurred on this project in the first place. So to solve it, what I'm using is a seven segment display. So this is a, shield for the Raspberry Pi, I'm using the Raspberry Pi Zero, They're called the Zero Seg Display, and so it's got uh, eight seven segment displays. Unfortunately it is quite a, a dull screen, so I've had to go to a little bit of a, a, a bit of a tricky hack to get it to display properly. So in order to get the display to appear on the other side, I've used a raster cut or raster engrave. And so it's basically taking the laser beam back and forth across this just to eat away at the material. It's quite a long process and it took a few attempts to work out what depth I needed to or the power and speed to get the right depth. But the end result seems to work quite well. So the display just sits neatly in the back there. Now the first piece I need to bond to really get this to go together is attach this red piece to the back white piece. And to do that, I'm gonna put a few drips of solvent around the place, sandwich it on, and then put some drips along the edge and just let kind of the surface tension kind of wick it inwards. So I've just encountered a really odd and really annoying problem. I just cleaned the, the acrylic off a little bit, which has given it a static charge. So whenever I try and bring a drip of the solvent in towards a join, it gets immediately drawn to the surface of the acrylic, and, which means it, it's impossible for me to place a drip and it damages the surface. And so in this process, I've ended up with two spots on the front red, which has really annoyed me. The first join I made was mounting the central white piece into the front kind of red logo. I started with this one because I thought it would be the easiest one to achieve. But sadly, it wasn't the case. I've kind of used this solvent between the, around the edges here. 
But what's happened is little drips have formed here and it's kind of corroded or eaten into the surface and it's kind of just destroyed the front, which is really annoying. Um, I then tried an alternative method of melting it, but it didn't really work very well because there's very little to work with. It's quite hard to twist and bond the two materials together. And so after a little bit of trial and error, I've kind of ruled out that as an option. So the solution I've decided to try for this front logo, because this is a bit that's got to be the neatest, is to stack up two pieces. So what I've got here is the white play logo bonded to a frosted logo. Now this is, um, I've used the solvent and I've neatly run around the edges and just so that nothing kind of spills out along the front. And so what I can then do is place this piece into the front so you end up with a perfect kind of finish there. And then the next white piece which goes in around here, I can bond that to this and that should give me enough distance so that there's no solvent will get through to the front. So I've now got all the acrylic pieces in place. The stand backs I haven't glued. And this is so I can remove them carefully at some point if I needed to. And um, the, the three layers are solvent welded together. I've just used the kind of capillary action to wick in solvents around the sides. The central two triangles are bonded in as well. I've kind of put in a little bit of solvent around the edges. It's not particularly great bonds, but hopefully that will do the job. So all that's left now is to get the electronics in. So this is the backlight. It's a kind of, I think it's designed to go behind an LCD panel of some kind, something which doesn't have its own backlighting. And it's just a white LED in an acrylic frame, which is designed to kind of distribute the light evenly. So I can try and power it up. You can see a nice white, fairly uniform glow if you could all that end. One side is see through one side isn't. So you need to make sure it goes this side down. And this will just be wired into the power supply for the Raspberry Pi. On the display, the little microchip here sticks forward quite some way. So I've had the, um, a recess cut out into the middle layer of acrylic. Unfortunately, I didn't really get the sizing right when I was moving it from one file to another. And so I've just had to grind out a little piece. But thankfully now it sits nice and flush. The mounting of the Raspberry Pi is one of the things I don't have a good solution for. I've got two layers of recessing here, which makes for a fairly snug fit that mounts around the display and the first PCB. Unfortunately, I then don't have anything to go in any further. I had thought about adding a fourth layer to this, something which kind of came up a little bit further and then really making a snug fit and then possibly something around that. But I think what I'm gonna go for is a slightly more pragmatic solution and glue it in here. Just use a bit of hot glue. It's already got a fairly snug fit. So it's not gonna be under any stress or strain. It's just gonna be a little bit of glue to locate it and kind of keep it stable. I finished wiring up the electronics. Thankfully for this project, it is really simple and just got the light and the power coming in. In both cases, I've soldered directly to the Raspberry Pi. What I've done is just kind of tacked onto the back of a few of the power pins. The display light's on all the time, so that, that's just running on two power connections, the dropping resistor in line, and the USB power again connects to two of the inputs. The connector here is too close to the ground, so there's no way a connector could plug into that, which is why I've had to go via this method here. So one aspect of this I wasn't anticipating, and a slight bit of a shame, is the seven segment display is visible through here. There's no light coming through, so I wouldn't have expected much in the way of illumination, but it's a dark panel, and there's not much acrylic sat between it, so you can see a dark outline in there. So the code I've written to make this work is really, really crap code, but I can get away with that because I'm using a piece of software called Supervisor to make sure it continually runs. And this is a, a fantastic setup because there's no error handling in my code at all. If the YouTube API crashes or goes down for some reason, or the data comes back, it's not quite right, the code will fail and crash. But Supervisor will then kind of see that that's occurred and restart the program. And so it means this is an incredibly reliable system. I've had this running for months and months uh, with the old display with no problems at all. 
So this is their final display and I'm really pleased with it. I think it looks really cool. It works exactly as I'd hoped for. The only thing I think I might change if I was to do it again was to reduce the overall size of the display. The, it's quite a large frame and it's fairly in, imposing with its colouring, which might not be the best thing. And so some kind of middle ground compromise would be good. Although given the type of screen I'm using, there are very limited placements for it.